Welcome to the Calyrex Game Corner's Pokemon D&D campaign, featuring Cindy, a young vagabond from the Hoenn region with pyromaniac tendencies, Gimli, a stocky, burly miner from Sinnoh looking for his lost son, Elodie, an enthusiastic foodie and baker from Kalos, and Schmidt, an enigmatic man from Johto with a duck. My name is Rich, and I'm the Game Master, and this is Dunsparce and Drampa. After a harrowing encounter with a rampaging Leviathan Gyarados that was en route to attack Duford Town, the Quacko Paco saved the day, with the Sinnoh trade ship the SS Verity and the majority of the Paco intact. Elodie was knocked unconscious by a, a hyperbeam, damaging her clothing and her hair, but after some quick medical attention from the trade ship crew, she is likely to be just fine. Tomas pulls Elodie on board, and Maya begins tending to Elodie's wounds, restoring her with 40 HP and some first aid. A high dragon that was summoned as a result of aubergine copycatting ancestral fey magic lingers around Elodie menacingly, snarling at nothing in particular as it takes in the situation. Maya covers Elodie in a blanket as she is both shivering and likely in need of some new clothing. Meanwhile, Maggie stands by her magmortar and bows to the Paco. She says, Thank you so much for your help. There's only so much we can offer as a gift to you, you know, with international mercantile laws. However, we are permitted to part with some of our stock that was misinventoried. I hope this is acceptable. Maggie gives to each of you six max revives, four ultra balls, one elixir, one PP up, two star pieces. We may actually want some group inventory because Maggie also distributes generally one of each vitamin. That is one HP up, one protein, one carbos, one iron, one calcium, and one zinc. Oh, girl. Oh, girl. Okay. Did you put those in the group inventory? <laughs> I, I can do that real quick. If I can remember how, all of them. How will we this. distribute? Well, yeah. thinking about like what types, or sorry, what stats each of them raise. Like, it would make sense if, like, Gimli got, like, the defense one, and... Yeah. I don't know, maybe... What happens... What happens when a person eats uh, a vitamin? There's only one way to find out. Because Cindy could use some defense. (laughs) (laughs) Real? Um, They they appear, and they're not, like, solid vitamins, like capsules. They are bottles of liquid, um, and Mm -hmm. they are... They have labels on them. And for clarity, you all, the vitamins aren't distributed one each. Like, for each person, right. you have one total. It's yeah, collectively, right. nice. One of each one total as a group. Correct. Maggie says, although we can't give you cash, a lot of these items sell for good money at any Pokemart, so do with them what you will. I do have one more thing for you as a symbol of our gratitude. Maggie then asks, who among you is the leader? Point to Quacko. Quacko. We all point to Quacko. <laughs> 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 this is, yeah that's fine maggie's gonna make a roll of some sort yeah she buys it she like clears her throat she's like very well uh she kneels down to quacko who stands very gracefully at her feet and maggie presents a small cubic black box it opens like a clamshell with a small puff of steam inside of it is an unusually shiny pokeball purple in color with a large m embroidered on the upper half Oh, Maggie says, oh. this is the world's best Pokeball. It is said to capture any creature without fail. Only a dozen or so have ever been made. And while we were given one as a means of protection in dangerous situations like today, I refrained from using it until absolutely necessary. And since, well, you all ended up protecting us in addition to all of our precious cargo anyways, I think it's only fair that you should have it. Guys, I think I know <laughs> what we have to go do now. Deoxys! Oh my god, Deoxys. no. No. Let's do it. No. Later. I'm joking. Later. <laughs> Only kind of, though. But that's the Only solution. Kind of. Sh- 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 Schmidt will take Unless... the Master Ball and say, thank you. Okay, that's good, because Quacko doesn't have inventory, so... Yeah, he's like, uh, he looks confused. He's like, yeah. what do I do with this? Um, I don't even have the one the Master Ball out. put next to the gun? Yeah, I was just about to ask. Absolutely. <laughs> Dude, that's sick, actually. Who would have thought this campaign would have gone to the point where Schmidt has a gun and a Master Ball in his inventory? (laughs) That's fucking cool. Maggie passes that off, and she and the crew give you all one bow, one good final bow. Uh, It's about, like, midnight, 1 a.m., 
and they gesture to the rope ladder that you ascended from to board the Verity. Um, they say, we'll be on our way to Duford soon, but you'll be a lot faster in that little boat, and I'm sure you want to rest up. Uh, do you decide to descend to the boat that you borrowed from the police? Yes. yes. Okay. As you approach the rope on the starboard side of the ship, uh, you do not arrive there before it is ascended by some familiar faces, being Gigi, Lauren, and Brawley from the Duford Town Gym. Behind them, Officer Delaney and one more person, someone who's less familiar, uh, a man who is slender and incredibly fair with emerald hair and icy blue eyes. He wears pale clothing and exudes a very calming presence. He stands by quietly while Brawley, who climbs the rope first, blindly dashes aboard the Verity, sending out all of his Pokemon on deck and exclaiming, All right, where's the monster? They ain't seen nothing yet. Let me at him. And he rushes forwards blindly with his eyes closed, punching, looking like he might, in fact, run off the ship. Uh, does anyone decide to stop him or just let him fail at this? Uh, yeah, I have no. No, I, let, I, him I just let, him, let him go. <laughs> figure it out. Let no, him. I stop. I stop. No, no, stop him with my dad have, reflexes, dude. I can't have lasagna it. stop him with like an invisible barrier. No, oh, yes, yeah, <laughs> lasagna. Let him makes figure it like, out. He's got to learn his own of... lessons. No, but he runs oh, into it, an invisible it, barrier. I that's that's funny reflexes, enough, dude. I can't stop. That's true. Gimli will stretch out a hand or something to slow him down. Brawley opens his eyes and he realizes, Oh, it's all over. Wow, you guys are strong trainers. And Gigi and Lauren look like. They laugh and they, they think Brawley's just, he's a silly guy. Because it seems that the threat has been cleared, uh, the strange man introduces himself to you all. Uh, he waves and he says, hello everyone, my name is Wally. The police department called me here to investigate a dangerous phenomenon. However, it seems like it's all been taken care of. This is great news. Perhaps it was just a good excuse for me to spend some time in this lovely town. What brings you four powerful trainers to the most remote Hoenn dwelling in the first place? Well, We're here to find his son. <laughs> yes, that's it. Yep. We've heard his son, Jim Lee, is somewhere in the greater uh, Duford area, and we're here to find him. Wally nods and says, that sounds like a very noble task. Officer Delaney crosses her arms and whispers something <laughs> in, in, into Wally's ear. He looks at you all, and then he looks back at Delaney kind of with an expression of like, really? And Delaney nods. And uh, Wally turns back to the group and he says, I'll have you know that I'm the assigned Elite Four governor of this part of the Hoenn region. Delaney has informed me of, of, of a terrible incident that uh, happened recently that it seems that the lot of you were involved in. I can't help but reflect on this act of heroism you performed for the Hoenn citizens, despite seemingly very few of you having been from the region. Let me have a discussion with the police department overnight, and I will meet you in the morning and we will try and come up with a compromise about your situation if that is agreeable yeah that's fun yeah we we appreciate that he says of course now should we get off this ship and the sea breeze and return to our beds oh i'd say so it's nappy time wally looks down at the police ship that he and the others arrived on and he says hmm, i don't think i will and he throws out a pokeball and uh, out from it comes a metallic Pokemon with two large magnets uh, attached to its sides that kind of looks like a UFO. And he hops on board and he begins to float away. And in a based on how calm he is, it's, it's a funny interaction. He turns around and waves back to you all and he says, Quacko Paco, we'll speak tomorrow. And he disappears off into the night sky. It seems that Brawly and Delaney and the other trainers are um, about to wrap things up. It seems Delaney's talking with the crew of the Verity and gathering some notes real quick, but you are welcome to return to your ship and go back to Dufort Town if you so wish. What a weirdo. <laughs> I love him, honestly. He's, He's so puntable. Uh, he might get us pardoned. Don't punt him. Okay, can I punt him after he gets us pardoned? I feel if like you that want to get arrested again. Jail. Yeah, that's, that's how you get put back in jail, bud. Well, I've never been to jail. Okay, do you want to go to jail? You know what? Maybe I'm missing out on life experiences. Maybe maybe I do. You yeah. want jail cake? Wait, I have FOMO up? about jail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Jail kind of was fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't tell Just that. Just the seriousness in his voice of like, did that. you seriously have FOMO about fucking jail? <laughs> you all may arrive back in Dufertown without issue. 
Uh, hmm, uh, Gimli, give me a perception check. 13. 13, cool. First off, let it be known. Elodie, while like present, uh, looks one, very tired. Two, a little like shell shocked and perhaps like glad to be back on land. It seems like mm-hmm. maybe she's experienced maybe a few too many experiences in the sea that has kind of haunted, damaged her psyche and also damaged her clothing. She's going to need to get a, get an outfit swap at some point. You also notice that since you uh, were last on Dufer Town, uh, the course will have definitely spread out. While they were mostly like separated in the northern part of Duford in the residential area, you're now in the main downtown area with the Pokemon Center and the gym and the police station, and they're just kind of everywhere. Uh, they got smiles mm-hmm. on their faces, and they're just bopping around. Um, as you get off your little boat, return it to the dock, you see just a whole bunch of Corsola on the dock and out on the streets, and they're all smiling and making pleasant sounds. You also witness... At the dock, people who are just enjoying maybe returning home from the nightlife, maybe a little sloppy. Uh, and the, there's two girls who turn to the group. It seems like they're on their way home from a night out. And uh, they wave and they say, uh, good evening, fellow adventurers. And they continue to move on. Do you respond to them? You're never too old to be an adventurer. <laughs> That's right. You're never too old to be an adventurer. Uh, as you say that, it seems like they finish your sentence with you, and then they like hold up their hands and they cheer. They go, "Yeah!" Like <laughs> he gets it. <laughs> they were kind of scouting your knowledge of the slogan and the fact that you shared it brightened their night. All has been considered. What what is your evening plan? Uh, if you de- if you decide to rest, there's of course the Pokemon Center hostel. You can stay up for free. It appears there's also like uh, resort hotels and things if you so wish. It's gonna go get fucking drunk. Okay. Where's Brandon? <laughs> oh, Wait, where is it, police officer? Brandon. Do you want to make a Brandon check? Yeah. Okay. Brandon check. <laughs> Roll a d20. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got a four on my Brandon check. Yeah. You're not sure where Brandon is. You don't know what he's doing. He might also be at the bar, to be fair. Perhaps. <laughs> oh, I'm down go to, to go bar. to the bar. Okay. Yep. Everybody's going to the bar. I don't know if I'm in any condition to. Um, is my only. Yeah, you have, have damage what, looking. 40, 40 health? Is that what you're I doing? do have 40 health. That's like but half of also, my total health. She needs so. a new outfit. <laughs> Okay, we can get yeah, can we go shopping first. Yeah, let's... Nightlife yeah. shopping, baby. Can, can yeah. I get a little club outfit to wear for the rest of the campaign? <laughs> a little club oh, yeah. outfit. Um, can we all get club outfits? I. It's just a, a checkered pair of overalls for me. Yeah, you don't Cindy get a club wants a club outfit. <laughs> you can't go to the club. You're a child. I thought the age of adult was like ten. Nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> Listen, just because you can gamble at 10 in this universe doesn't mean you can go to the club. Can she? What was the gambling? You can legally gamble. Well, I mean, as a trainer at 10 years old, I can oh, gamble. Oh, sure. In games. Yeah, yeah, in the games. Yeah, okay, okay. I thought Cindy did gambling. I was like, I don't think so. She no. played that sketchy game at Meteor Falls, but that wasn't like... That's not real gambling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just that was trainer. illegal gambling anyway. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it was unregulated gambling. Um. Yeah, I it's an it, it's a weird situation to go clothes shopping, but I'm not gonna say it's impossible. Um, I want someone to roll a dice for me, probably Schmidt, because he was the first one to say that he wants to go out. So roll a d20. Uh, thirteen. Okay, Just straight on the back. Yeah. As far as like regular actual clothing stores, none seem to be open. Um, there is the Pokemon Mart that you saw earlier that is running twenty four seven. Uh, perhaps they might have something of the likes. Um, Walmart club clothes. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> the height of fashion. Yeah, I mean, alternatively, that... we could get some T-shirts and like cut them into club clothes. That's not an oh issue. Oh my god, full hey, yo? fa- You're gonna be a maxinista. That's great. And this is a small town. There's like a total of of two clubs um, that you could go to, or uh, even bars at this point. They're they're large bars, but like that's kind of all there is. So, where do you want to go from here? Probably Walmart Pokemon, club right? clothes. Yeah, we yeah, gotta you go at least Walmart. need temporary clothing, right? Yeah, I, uh, probably. Yeah. Aldi's in a blanket currently. Yeah. All right. Schmidt this is, is my uh, fashion. <laughs> walking away from the group and going to find a bar. Okay. That's fun. Yeah. Splitting the party. Let's go. I'll do the trio first for this moment. Elodie, Cindy, and Gimli arrive at the Pokemon Mart. Again, they see this uh, vague statue that's outside that seems to be of a horse or a donkey Pokemon that is welcoming people in. 
Uh, they enter, and who do they see? But none other than one of the A Mart brothers. Uh, this fine gentleman is wearing a cowboy hat, but he does look pretty similar to all the other ones you've met. Uh, you can't help but notice the extreme amount of memorabilia within this Pokemon Mart that is themed around this one particular horse slash donkey creature. Uh, the gentleman waves you in. Uh, he seems particularly peppy despite it being about 1 or 2 a.m. And he says, Howdy, partners. Welcome to Braymart. Someone say howdy back quick. Before he gets howdy. mad. <laughs> yeah, quick, quick, quick. Uh, meowdy. Do you say meowdy? Do you say howdy? <laughs> sure. Meowdy. Let's say meowdy. Meowdy. Okay. Uh, roll charisma check. This is going to go so poorly. Let's go. I'm hype. Here's the three, baby. Uh, what is my charisma? Okay. That's a four. Four. Yeah, see, I'm my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Bray isn't delighted he kind of <laughs> scowls at cindy and he stomps his cowboy boot foot and he says listen here it's howdy not meowdy <laughs> now you're gonna buy something genuinely upset. yeah we're here for your finest club clothes uh God, he's gonna get more insulted <laughs> He he takes a, a request that one would be made to a merchant with f- fair seriousness. He says, hmm, very well. Let me see what I got in stock. Uh, LD, give me a d20. For sure. Can we tell him the Pablo story? <laughs> 17. 17 is great. The, he has a surprisingly good selection of general trainer's clothing. Uh, it seems like there are like graphic t-shirts that have like a big pokeball on them or like particularly popular pokemon like eevee clothes and like pikachu clothes and like starter pokemon uh and he has in, in a separate rack uh he says like brace specials and there's a full rack of um all gender cowboy clothing as well oh yes cowboy club clothes no Perfect. Okay, Schmidt's not no. there. <laughs> we meet up and want a cowboy makeover. This is our cowboy arc, guys. Forget boating. Cowboy arc, dude. I will give Schmidt a moment of attention. Um, oh yeah. I, as I said, there are two clubs. One of them is called the Quivering Quillfish. One <laughs> of them is called the Spind Experience. And there, one has a mascot of like a blowfish Pokemon. The other one has a mascot of like a dizzy bear Pokemon. Uh, let's go for the dizzy bear. Okay, it seems like they have equally kind of moderate lines. Uh, the the spend experience line, it's got about like fifteen. There, people. It, does it have to be like a club? Is there not like a like just like a bar, like a, a more casual bar? Yeah, yeah. Let's flavor a lower tempo bar for you. I just need to come up with a name real quick. I just think like a character, familiar. and then like, what, yeah, what's a good name of a dive right. bar? Bar. Tempting Tepig. Like, like the Tempting Tepig. Yeah, Tempting Tepig. Kind of a, a a casual bar with a bit of an older crowd, a little more mature crowd, uh, less people in their early twenties, and more people from like their late twenties through like their sixties are enjoying it. It's it's a bar. It's dark, but the music is pretty calm, and people are. Uh, People are pretty chill, just having a drink late at night. Bartender asks uh, for your trainer card. Yeah, give it to him. Cool. Is it canonically established that <laughs> Schmidt falsified his age so that he would be 69 on his trainer card? Or is that just a funny hot? What? Hot? Yeah. <laughs> is that you, something that happened? That was, no, that's from a while ago. Do you man. remember when yeah, I that's drew real. them? <laughs> like two years ago. No. We can retcon. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> okay. No, I I get a thousand percent confirmed that, that that was. Well, so I asked and Richie said sixty nine and I didn't even realize who said it. I'm like, okay, sixty nine it is. And Rick okay. Drew yeah, I think that was up. either that was either me or Cindy. I don't think that was Schmidt's decision, so we will No. Okay, yeah. So it shows his actual <laughs> age, which is uh twenty seven, twenty six. What did I tell you? I don't remember, that's why I'm asking. Okay. Late twenties. Well, that's that's, that's twenty seven, yeah. Yeah. Twenty seven? Yeah. The the bartender kind of gruff man with a gray mustache, um, bald head, uh takes a look at it, hands it back to you, and he says, What do you have? Uh Jaeger on the rocks. What's the Jaeger equivalent in the Pokemon world? One second. We gotta do this. So when Richie opens his Pokemon theme bar, he's prepared. <laughs> it's Yane Mo. Yangmo Meister. <laughs> That's what it is. Oh my god, Yang yes. Mo. Okay. 
Uh, yeah. And there's like a little funny quadruped dragon uh, that on the bottle. Uh, he pours you... Uh, do you have it on the rocks? Do you have it neat? On the rocks. On the rocks. Um, a, a, a darkly colored liquor that is vaguely licorice flavored, and you may enjoy. What is your what is your angle at this bar? You just trying to drink, have a good time. Drink to forget. Drink to forget. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm assuming you're gonna have an open tab then. Yeah, probably. Okay. Um, are there any checks you would like to make, or anything you'd like to do before I return to the other group? Uh, nope. Okay. Schmidt's just a drinking away. Schmidt's it back. drinking away. Um, back to the players who are in Braymart. So yeah, standard kind of, if you can picture a trainer from a video game who isn't like a student, uh, that's more or less the clothing that you'll find. The more like, and also not like those like, well, no, ace trainer outfits, like jumpsuits, sure. The the funny like Pokemaniac outfits that have like Charizard cosplay. You can find those. Yeah. We'll say any standard trainer class, you can find their clothing. Um, and then also the cowboy stuff. Okay. I've already started putting the outfit together. Um, okay. Please describe. So definitely, first of all, I'm going to need one of those, like, you know, like the girls wear like the bachelorette parties, like pink sparkly bedazzled cowboy hats with a little (laughs) tiara on them. (laughs) Yeah, I do. Um, (laughs) Oh God. then, (laughs) <laughs> oh and they're like fuzzy on the brim <laughs> <Okay>. yes <laughs> i like the feathers yeah, yeah yeah um my other requests i was thinking like the barbie movie like cowgirl <laughs> barbie outfit vibe but like not quite hot pink like more of a light pink so like something like that for the top sure and then the like bell bottoms but in a more similar color to this okay and then I need I okay I guess I could, should kind of describe that so it's like a like a light pink vest and it's got like a little floral pattern on it sure you're gonna wear a shirt under obviously. it I'm guessing yeah probably just okay uh just like a normal shirt probably something like that okay um and then as for I think obviously we need cowboy boots so I've got two options here uh one of which are like pink and they've got little red hearts on them and then the other are pink with floral so <laughs> you went at it we dude. <laughs> the floral i think the pink with the floral matches the vest yeah i feel that i too. think that looks really nice okay perfect <laughs> yeah you guys are All funny right. this is my vibe if i can do this like this would be the vibe <laughs> yeah um and then also if i could get a little uh cowboy hat for cabbage as well that'd be great sure what, please describe the cowboy hat for cabbage oh true what ca- what cowboy hat would cabbage want I'm picturing a classic one, super honestly. Spy looking, yeah, cowboy just like a classic, hat. like just a really like hard like cowboy hat. Do they have nearly the same um, cowboy pieces that Elodie's getting, but like in a yellow or orange? Um, sure. I I kind of want. Um, everyone's got to make some rolls. Okay. To... That's totally fair. Yeah. Um, I just thought I'd I describe what I'm looking for first. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna give you bonuses based on your description. Um. Cindy, you're more or less trying to do the same thing, but just with a more fiery take? Yeah, so instead of, like, flowers, if they have, like, flames or something, like, that would be really cool. Okay. Or, like, a denim jacket with, like, flames down the sleeves. Ooh, yeah, 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 that's probably there. Also, like, a frilly, fuzzy cowboy hat and boots. Yeah, fantastic. Um, Gimli, do you need more clothing? I just need a cowboy hat. Just a cowboy hat. <laughs> hey, anybody, Otherwise, true. I look like a farmer. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah true. You, you fit put in a cowboy already. hat on me. I'm just a farmer. Yeah. Any particular kind of cowboy hat? Just the the most basic beige looking cowboy hat. Just like a ten. Actually, you know what? Give me like, like a, a ten gallon hat. to fill out my height. Oh, okay. Like, give me a massive oh, one, like, like a Doug, Doug Dimitone Dimitone. <laughs> style hat. Let's yeah, just to fill go. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Um, sure. Everyone roll me a d20. I have invisible modifiers based on your descriptions and the likelihood of what you want. I got a 10. Okay. I put it in the cabbage to make sure. Thank you. Um, I got an 11 on oh. my cowboy outfit check. Mm-hmm. Okay. Was there? Were we supposed to add any modifiers for that? Or I have them. Anything? They're a secret. Okay, you have them. Uh, 14. Okay. Um, Gimli, you get your big old cowboy hat, no problem. There's plenty of hats here. Uh, no question. Um, the price tag on this bad boy is forty-five Pokemon dollars. Do you no go problem. for it? Cool. Yeah. Cindy and Elodie. Elodie, your outfit is coming together pretty nicely. You found a, you found a good hat. You found a good jacket. The hat you found is 
the the funny very feminine poppy one with the tiara and the fuzzy around it the 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 brim is a little wide for elodie's head but it looks cute she pulls it off she rocks it yeah she gets everything comes together pretty nicely um she does have to pick a top to go under the vest though Hmm. this is a good question (laughs) roll a d100 Well, I don't know what the options are. I don't have a table. I mean, you can still roll one. <laughs> yeah, I'll just roll one just for fun. Okay. Why not? This is actually just ancestral fame magic. Just kidding. <laughs> Locking it in. You have to do it. So whatever the fame magic table is, you pick a shirt that corresponds with whatever the like fame magic. I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it. Bet. <laughs> um, that would be an eighty. Eighty. What does that feel like to me? Oh, it actually lines up pretty nicely. Um, the the shirt that Elodie finds that we can have this be in any color so that it matches. It's a little loud. It's a little gaudy. Um, but the theme of it is generally uh, flower petals and butterflies. Uh, Cute. Okay, I love it. It can be whatever color you want. Uh, but that will be going under the vest, which uh, the vest is kind of maybe floral anyway, so maybe it works out. Uh huh. Um, yeah. Long story short, you get pretty much everything you want. Um, it is going to cost you 350 Pokemon dollars. Do you want to go for it? Yes. Okay. Cindy, same kind of deal since you're kind of just copying, not copying, but you're going for a similar cowgirl vibe as Elodie. We'll say that you can find the same stuff. Do you want all the same items? Boots, vest, hat, shirt? Maybe not pants, but like vest. I have a shirt. So like hat, vest, boots. Okay. We'll give that to you for 310 Pokemon dollars. Is that going to work for you? Okay. Okay. Transaction being made with Bray. Uh, Bray is impressed. He says, oh, gr- great choices, you guys. I- I'm all about this kind of southern Unovan wear. Very good decision. Way to go. <laughs> and uh, puts everything in a bag for you, except for Elodie. He puts it in a bag and he says, there's a restroom. I don't have a dressing room, but if you want to change in there, be- you're more than welcome. Thank you. I will do that. Okay. You do that. Everyone's got their outfit swaps, so congratulations. Is there anything else you want from the Mart? Can we just tell them the sob story about Pablo, just because? <laughs> just <laughs> even though you've made a purchase, you just want to yes. make sure he knows? Yes. Sure, who's telling the story? Cindy can in her typical, you know uh, recently Pablo. typical story. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know Pablo? Um. Yeah, Uh. charisma time. Oh, shit. <laughs> Eight. Eight. Hey, yeah, you as you mentioned, Pablo, um, an iconic Pokemon jumps up from behind the counter that you haven't seen yet. Uh, it is, in fact, a Pikachu. There's no point to describe it because mm. we all know what Pikachu looks like. This Pikachu's wearing a cowboy hat and it's oh, chewing man. on a piece of hay. Um, and Bray folds his arms and he looks at Cindy and says, what about Pablo? Uh Oh, so are you familiar with the uh, Lily Cove Festival? Well, Pablo got stolen, and we went and saved Pablo, and we were, like, buddies with Kay because we saved Pablo, and it was a good time. Uh, They listened to the story. Pikachu, like, spits some cud in a little metal bucket and grimaces at Cindy, and Pablo says, you shouldn't have found him. That scoundrel should have stayed lost. Yeah, I was like, read the room, buddy. <laughs> Pablo is my, my friend here, Paul's biggest rival. Paul! Oh. And Paul's, oh. Paul's cheeks spark a little bit. Pikachu's name is Paul! <laughs> Does Gimli say that so out loud? I'm not here for this. No. Okay. Regardless, I'll react just because it's funny, uh, as if Gimli had. Um, Bray nods and says, it's a respectable name. I'm very proud of my friend, Paul. Mm-hmm. 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 Paul's a proud and Pikachu. Paul looks super strong. Uh, normal but, name. like, listen, it, it looks like if Paul got taken, Paul could, like, handle himself. Like, we had to save Pablo. Right. Bray says... Yeah, if anything, it shows Pablo's weakness. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh <laughs> Bray says, you're damn right Paul could handle himself. I trained this boy since he was just just a ween. And he's grown stronger and stronger every day. I bet you never meet a Pikachu that can thundershock a Rhyhorn. I never have. And Bray says, well, now you've met him. I'm glad to hear that Pablo's still getting into those antics. He's going to find himself in some trouble one day. And good old Bray and Paul, we ain't going to bail him out next time. Cool. 
he changes his demeanor and he says, is there anything else I can get for you all? I think we're all right. Good. Cool. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I need anything. Great. We will assume that you exit Braymart for the evening. Really for the early morning, but... Um, and there's an outfit swap. Congratulations. Not really as much for Ghibli, but you're all in Southern Wear now. Fun. Schmidt. Yeah. Roll a d6. Is this perception, constitution? Or it is no own? stat. I just want a d6. Uh, a five. Five. Schmidt has had six drinks. Okay. <laughs> um, he's been going to town, uh, making a corresponding constitution save, please. Okay. Uh, I rolled a 17. Okay. That's pretty dang good. Yeah, I don't want it to be good. <laughs> Schmidt's had... Can I roll a disadvantage? Do you want to? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Six. There we go. Okay, cool. Um, Schmidt has certainly forgotten. Uh, whatever Ooh. he was trying to forget, he doesn't remember right now. Uh, and he's uh, feeling kind of good, but also kind of not fully put together. He's going to be suffering from various wisdom and dexterity penalties uh, until he sobers up and pr- and after his likely hangover as well. I'm just going to assume that you're making small talk with the barkeep um, and not particularly interacting with anyone unless you want to. Yeah. Okay, cool. The other three gamers, Cindy, Elodie, Gimli, you've exited Braemar in your southern wear. Where are you off to? Well, do we um, assume Schmidt went to the club and he went to the bar so we won't run into him at all? I mean, you can make a Schmidt tuition check. My Schmidt tuition. There's also... How much does that cost? There's also <laughs> uh, some various bystanders walking around, kind of like enjoying mm-hmm. the nightlife. Some of them are drunk, some of them are not. Um, and there's also a ton of Corsola around, if that would assist you in any way. Is Sarah still yeah. here? You want to make a Sarah check? Yeah. Sure. Sarah check. Are we partying with Sarah? Oh, hell yeah. You stole our identity. I rolled a 16 on the die. Sure. Um, you do not know where Sarah is, but you swear you can hear her voice. Yeah, her voice is, is iconic. Uh, you you feel like you hear her say, like, what the fuck? Or something. Just oh my like God, what being, the fuck? Being dramatic. Uh, and you hear it from the direction of the quivering quillfish. Sick. That sounds like where the party's at. That's where the part. Sarah's there. Party's there, dude. Yeah, might as well, I guess. It might also be where Brandon is if he's escorting her again. True. Low key, yeah. Brandon check. Okay, is that where you wish to go? Yes. Okay. Um, you get to the line. There's probably about like twelve or so dudes in the line. Uh, the bouncer looks down at you guys, points at Cindy, points at Elodie, and makes the come here gesture. Okay. Um, coming here. Okay. Um, he, as you approach the door, when you hear the club music inside, boots, 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 uh, he pulls open uh, one of those partitions and gestures you in. <laughs> um, can we yeah. gesture Gimli over too? And sure. Do you just do you just in, like suggest that Gimli come over? Do you say anything? What is your action? Here? Um. Yeah, I'll be like, oh, thank you. Can our friend come with us? Is that all you say? Yes, uh, probably. And um, I'll, I'll just say that. I'm not going to gesture to Gimli yet. Okay. Um, the, the bouncer is like curious. He, he's a big dude and he's bald. Uh, and he raises a thick eyebrow inquisitively, but he doesn't say anything. Um, I'm just going to then, I guess, gesture Gimli over and start walking through. Okay. Uh, do, you, do you approach Gimli? I do, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Gimli, make a charisma check. How do you do, fellow bald men? <laughs> the best way to walk up to somebody who is also bald. Honestly, that's yes. Right. We're both bald together. I'm bald, and that's exactly what I do to bald people. So, so I'm saying 18. Okay. 18? Yeah. Yeah, Gimli um, approaches and respectfully um, takes off his hat or tips it to the bouncer. Yeah. Um, the bouncer buys it. He's like, all right, this guy's all right. Um, <laughs> and to the dismay of a bunch of young dudes who are in line, they're like, hey, what are like you said you would come in uh he he invites you all uh to enter so um welcome to the quivering quillfish again boots 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 uh uh it's a little you know it you get the feeling that pretty much all the young people of Dufertown, town which 
isn't many are in here it's not a huge club it's not like multi-level or anything it's one floor um there's one bar that is like pretty wide it's around the side there's probably like 40 people in here 40 young people um and there's a dj on a stage uh who's spinning some records and there is a funny looking like bipedal salamander pokemon that has seemingly active sparks of electricity around its head and its back that just kind of grooving on the stage um and people seem to be excited by its presence what's your what's your mission here Do we start dancing dancers any dancers uh, in the chat well i'm a prima ballerina so true 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 that's the now i want to do that like uh just said being the old guy in the room, I want to do like that Russian like <laughs> kick dance. Yeah. <laughs> the sailors dance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Elodie, what's your plan? Um, I'm gonna get a drink first and ask Gimli if he wants one. Okay. No, I'm right, all vibes tonight. Cindy a drink. <laughs> I if you want to drink, that's your prerogative. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> what what is the drinking you age won't. in Pokemon? Uh, you can roll a history check. <laughs> history check for drinking age. Unless she is peeing on the die. What's my uh history modifier? Uh, Fifteen uh, with the history bonus. In the Hoenn region, it's different for the region. It is mm-hmm. twenty years of age. Crap. Even my ID says eighteen. Rip. Well, nineteen now, right? I guess if it would have the ID is birth, not updated, would... maybe I don't think it's a lot. Is well, it if, it, if it's share, if it lists a birthday, <laughs> it would yeah, it would be nineteen. Oh yeah, but, but just it would just list. But your like birthday, just yeah. nineteen because yeah. my birthday was a day ago, not even or just a day ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, Unfortunately, I do not want to get this child drunk. Okay, it seems <laughs> like the bouncer didn't question, so that's good. Uh, but yeah, uh, what drinks are you getting for oh, yourself yeah. in Gimli? Are they carding? Because sometimes they card at the door. They didn't card at the door. Do you want to see if they card Elodie at uh, at the bar? Yes. Okay, Elodie, what are you like, getting? Yeah, nearby. Sure. Um, dang, do, what do I want? I don't know. I'll just ask the bartender for something fruity, man. Something fruity. Okay, the bartender will. Or is that also what you're ordering for Gimli? I think he said he didn't want anything. Oh, that's right. Right. <laughs> no, ask him if they have vibes. <laughs> Let's see if he gives you. You, something. Guys, you guys got vibes. Fruit? What the fuck is vibes? Oh, there you go. Okay. That's me, oh, not the bartender. What's vibes? Oh no, but see if it's like a drink that they accidentally have that it's like I got you. I got you vibes. <laughs> okay, Gimli said oh, earlier. True. Yeah, because no he said vibes. he just wanted to vibes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. You ask the bartender if he has vibes. I'm making a rule. Yeah. Uh, he like looks a little confused, and then he nods, and then he goes into like a mini fridge behind the bar, and he pulls up a can of a uh, of a malt beer that has a vibrava on it and it says <laughs> vibravas on it and he's assuming that's, that's what you meant. wanted that's absolutely what i wanted great and then <laughs> and then something fruity yes yeah he throws together uh, a reddish pinkish drink that comes in a martini glass and has a little uh has a cherry in it and an orange rind and a little a tiki umbrella yummy um he asks if you want to open a tab or if you want to pay now um i'll open a tab Cool, it's open. Uh, Schmidt, you doing okay? Yeah. Okay, roll a d20. Hell yeah. Five, let's go. Five. An old man has come to sit next to you, and it seems like he might have been talking at you for a little while. And he's just kind of rambling. He like is very funny looking. He's, uh, he's wearing like cargo shorts and a dirty t-shirt. He's got a mustache and a beard. And he has a backpack that looks like it has like it's overflowing with maps or scrolls or something like some sort of wrapped up paper. And he's just been rambling at you for a while. And he's like, yeah, my favorite part about the Hohen region caves is that, you know, the architecture is so unique of the ancient people who used to live here whenever they would come in. And he's just like rambling about that. Not the caves. Um, he he says, oh, yeah, and the Hoenn native Pokemon are always so interesting. There's always these treasures in the caves, right? Because no one actually wants to go that deep because they're so well nourished and they're, they've been living there for so long. They're quite territorial, and he's just rambling. He's rambling at you. Do you do anything about it? Uh, Yeah, Schmidt will interact with him. Like, as in the middle, he's rambling. Schmidt just looks at him. He's like, when the fuck did you get there? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, he, he'll pause his speech, and he'll he'll look at you, and he's been like, Oh yeah, we've been chatting for about forty minutes now. Forty. 
Yeah. And he, <laughs> he, he says, that's right. I introduced myself and you didn't tell me your name. I thought that was a little rude, but, you know, it's fine. We're friends. And then he continues to ramble about caves if you it's wish to listen friends. or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He'll just sit there and listen. Like, he doesn't ever, like, acknowledge him or give him his name or anything. <laughs> cool. Um, this gentleman is glad <laughs> that you are doing so. He's happy. Um, he's drinking what seems to be the equivalent, the Pokemon World equivalent of, like, a whiskey cocktail. Like, maybe an old-fashioned or something. Back to the Quivering Quillfish. I'll tell you guys, this is delightful i have a lot of notes now that i've prepped a lot and going to the club was not in my notes but i this is why i love you guys yeah uh you have two drinks i guess you have the vibravas malt beer now i don't know if you wish to drink it or not but you have a can of it i mean yeah good vibes. i'm gonna so yeah, they I'm gonna did return. not card elodie uh correct they did not can i roll insight to see like what are the chances yeah like, please assess what are the odds they'll just give me a drink yeah yeah Ah, uh, shoot. Uh, mm, that's a six. Cindy is fully confident that they will give her a drink. <laughs> this is not good. Cindy's going to get kicked out. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to hop into like a busier section of the bar. Okay. <laughs> and just kind of be like, like trying to like squeeze in between like a bunch of people just to like, oh, I want, I don't know something fruity or whatever but like okay. try to get it where it's like busy so they're not really looking at like who's getting a drink sure okay give me give me d20 Please. it sounds like cindy hasn't been to a bar before <laughs> that was a nat 20 <laughs> oh really Kidding. Fuck. yeah okay um <laughs> yeah um, cindy has never been to a bar cindy inter- cindy like finds a crowd of people who are kind of waiting who didn't have as flashy of outfits as ellie so they didn't get attention from one of the two working bartenders um and uh as one of the bartenders goes to hand drinks to these patrons who've been waiting patiently um cindy just reaches out her hand and grabs it and they just don't notice uh what does cindy want to drink uh, we'll go with whatever cindy doesn't know okay i will <laughs> I will roll. Yeah. Um, this is a pica colada. It's actually served in a coconut. Oh, yeah. The coconut a is a little, like, it's a coconut for sure, but it's a little disturbing because it seems to be a dropped head of an Alolan executor. Um, it wasn't killed. They naturally shed their heads like this, but there's a face on it, and it's a little strange. Cindy just, like, walks over to Elodie and Gimli, like, I got juice. Um, yeah, it's in fact, essentially, oh it's like the Pokemon equivalent of coconut and pineapple juice and rum, um, and it's in an executor head, and, you know, it might be the tail, actually, uh, but it's in a coconut, basically, and there's a, a decoration that looks like a Pikachu tail in it. Um, it's a female Pikachu tail, it has a heart indented at the top. Um, I'm gonna give, uh, Gimli the vibes drink. Yeah, yeah, he's, oh. he's chilling with it. Wonderful, just what I wanted! What is what's your what's your plan? You guys drinking? You dancing? What, what what's the angle? Yeah, let's dance. Oh, I just pound down the can of vibes and continue <laughs> my Russian dance. <laughs> That's fucking sick. <laughs> Give me a performance. Do you on that. shotgun the can of? Oh yeah. Vibes? What do you stab it with? My pickaxe. <laughs> Shorty is in the club with a fucking pickaxe. <laughs> yeah. That's raw as hell, dude. Uh, That's insane. Give me give me a performance check, but use your strength. Uh, twenty three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, P- <laughs> everyone sees the old man in the cowboy hat and the in the overalls. Um, pull out his pickaxe, and a few people are concerned at first. Like, is, is, is that a weapon? Is he gonna start hurting us? And some people like reach for their pokeballs. They see him stab the beer and just shotgun it, and everyone's like, "Yeah!" <laughs> um, and the DJ plays some air horns um and then sees the dance that Gimli's performing performing it very well swiftly changes the music to music from a foreign region that is up tempo <laughs> features accordions and string instruments and not usual club music that accompanies this russian sailors dance that Gimli's performing he's killing it yeah <laughs> what are the other two of you doing in light of this i'm joining in on that russian dance man okay I, I, i'm i'm chilling i'm i'm still holding my drink i'm still sipping at it but like you know i'm dancing Roll me two checks. Roll me a performance charisma check and a dexterity check. For my performance, I got a 13. And my dexterity, I got a 14. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, you do the dance well. You don't do it as well as Gimli. Um, and you manage to not really spill your drink, which is great. Fabulous. It's quite the scene. Some bar patrons love what's going on. Some people are not having it. Cindy, what are you doing? Cindy's just like off to the side where like, I guess we were standing before they like were at the center of attention. She's just kind of like bopping to the music, sipping her drink. Cool. Give me a quick perception, Cindy. Mm-hmm. 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 Three. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Great. What a delightful time in this club. There's a small <laughs> chant that is beginning, uh, and they're saying, adventurer, 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 as Gimli. Like, Ellie's doing a good job, but they're focused on Gimli. Yeah. <laughs> Gimli's... You're never too young to be an adventurer! <laughs> yeah, and everyone's like, yeah! And uh, you, you should tell them that Elodie was the one who started it. No, they're not going to believe that. What? <laughs> what? He's not no. dancing good enough. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, she Gimli. invented that. I was like, I was like, no, you did. Like, clearly. Yeah. Uh, Schmidt. Well, no, you could be like, I have the OG adventurer. Sorry to interrupt. That's fine. No, you're fine. Schmidt, you can't help but notice your passive perception picks up uh, the voice of someone who is irritated. They enter the bar that you're in, uh, the tempting tepic, and they say, oh my fucking God. I can't believe they would just kill the vibes like that, change the music, and some fucking old man would just start doing some lame, stupid fucking dance. The music in here is so quiet. I need a drink. And a woman with uh, long red hair, uh, wearing some some good club clothes, uh, a, a, a loose green top and a tight black skirt, um, sits down next to you, and she orders a drink. Do you do anything in this situation? Does Schmidt do anything in this situation? No, 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 no. Schmidt's got one thing on his mind right now. Okay. Are you, are you ordering more drinks? You've had quite a few. He's going to keep going until he's out. Okay, you will give me another D6. That's a three. Okay. Um, I will not do the plus one. We will just say that you have three more, so you're at nine here. Uh, based on your last constitution check, you are not doing <laughs> well. Uh, give me another disadvantaged con check, and I have a modifier for it as well. Sick. Uh, three. Three, yeah. The, the man who's next to you, who you did pick up, you may not remember at the end of the day, but his name is Omari. Uh, and man, he loves caves and ruins. His speech has started to like slow down, and you don't know if that's a result of him being drunk or you being drunk. And as this obnoxious woman pulls up, she slams on the bar, and she says, Hello, I'm important. Can I have a drink? And she's being really annoying. Um, you... You kind of lock eyes with her, and then you kind of turn, and you look at Omari, and you see that he's kind of fallen asleep, collapsed on the bar. And at this moment, Schmidt's eyes roll in the back of his head, and he also passes out on the bar. <laughs> Congratulations, <Okay>. question mark? <laughs> That's what you're going for? Uh, accomplished. Yeah. Back to the Quivering Quillfish Gamers. Uh, Gimli's tearing it up. People love it. What are, what are your goals for this evening here? I mean, I'm clearly just here to party, dude. Yeah, just the vibes? Just the vibes. Okay. Cindy's bopping through her drink. Probably going to stop at one, but she's like, yeah. Okay. I'm such an adult. So good. I'm such an adult. Yeah. Not breaking any laws. None. Never broken a law ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Never in my life. (laughs) Like a a real adult. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Elodie, any particular things from you, or are you just having a good time? Yes, I am just having a good time bopping. Cool. Dancing with, with Gimli and Cindy. Cindy, you do not have an alcohol tolerance, and you are frail of body. Please make a constitution save. <laughs> my rolls have been, aside from that nat 20, my rolls have been absolute garbage. Uh, constitution is minus one, so that's an 11. 11, okay. Cindy, you're drunk off of this one drink. It's a strong drink, and it's very sugary, sure. which I don't know if that actually impacts the alcohol absorption or not. But you're, you're feeling a little silly and goofy. Silly, goofy mood, mm-hmm. perhaps. Elodie and Gimli, you guys are having a great time. If you don't have further goals, uh, these venues will be closing pretty soon. So I want to check in and establish that uh, this is how we intend to wrap up our evening. Yeah, I think is so. Is Brandon in the, in the club? Do you want to make a Brandon check? Sure. Cindy, in her infinite drunk wisdom, will make a Brandon check. Okay. It's an 11 on the dice. Okay. Nope. No luck. There's a bunch of dudes that, like, seem Brandon-esque, but they are not Brandon. Okay. Yeah. The evening um, wraps up. It's about 3.30 or 4 a.m. 
currently the sun is going to rise pretty soon uh and after a night of great partying great having a good time of being an adventurer who's never too old uh the staff begins to escort elodie cindy and gimli out of the establishment do you all comply yeah of course yeah. okay great schmidt make a wisdom check 17 17 um you are fucked up to say the least but you are cognizant enough to notice the barkeep kind of like tapping you on your head as it's down in the bar and he's saying hey hey buddy hey buddy you gotta go we're closing uh do you respond to this yeah, he lets out like a grunt, like a groan, like he's just like, like and okay. then he starts to like crawl out. He sees you're fucked up and he says, hey, you, you're going to pay tonight. You're going to come back in the morning. There's going to be a 20 percent upcharge if you come back. Uh, his Schmidt pulls out his wallet. OK, the cost is 40 Pokemon dollars for That's nine it? for. Well, it should okay. be more, shouldn't it? Uh it's kind of a dive bar though it is a dive bar it's not a club it's not a club yeah we'll, a nine dollar we'll, beer night yeah we'll, we'll roll it we'll roll it okay um yeah, i imagine the bills are in like i don't know increments like they are in us like 20 50 100 whatever sure, so sure, sure. just throws a 50 and perfect just leaves. yeah that works um schmidt looks around realizes he is the last one to leave we will say just for for the fun of it and because the quacko paco is uh skilled in this way you managed to exit the quivering quillfish and the tempting tepic tempting tepic at the same time so there's a brief <laughs> paco reunion uh um, it looks at the rest of the paco uh, like you can tell he's fucked up like his eyes are like glazed over and then he, he looks at him and he's like what the fuck happened to you <laughs> cindy offers to help uh, Schmidt walk back to the Pokemon Center, pretending that... she is not drunk. Cool. She is okay. What? How does she help? <laughs> Combo How... of drunk yeah. Cindy and drunk Schmidt. How does she help? That's a good question. <laughs> she like offers out her arm. Like, do you need a hand? Let me help you. Which hand? Just... That's your decision. Whatever hand. Yeah. Which side is Cindy approaching Schmidt from? Maybe the like my right. But it would be like facing Schmidt's left. I guess. Okay. You know he has two different arms right on. <laughs> yeah. It's a moment. Okay. Schmidt, what do you do? I want to flavor something where like the arm does something. I don't know, like a boxer or something. But sure. Yeah. Roll... Not like intentional, but like Schmidt's just drunk. Or... Sure. Yeah. Roll a d20. Uh, I got a four on the bonk check. Sure. Yeah, as uh, as Schmidt and Cindy go to class pans to assist each other, um, Cindy can't help but notice uh, as Schmidt grasps onto her, uh, his grip is super tight, uh, and his fingernails are like almost piercing, and they scratch her hand. <laughs> Guys, have you ever noticed Schmidt's weird hand? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 you know, it it did, it was there. I did see it while we were fighting that Gyarados. But it didn't seem like the right time to ask. <laughs> um, it's never really the right time to ask about an injury. You know, you're right. I think I'll just leave it. Um, <laughs> just like you're never too old to be an adventurer. There's never. This a good is Cindy time to being drunk. It. Like, yeah, have you guys seen this weird hand? Have you always had this? <laughs> I never noticed. Like, did I just not notice? Oh, you're asking Schmidt. Sorry. I mean, you can also uh, not respond if you're drunk and want to pass out. <laughs> how's, how would Schmidt respond to that? Um, can Schmidt tell that Cindy is drunk? <laughs> I don't think Schmidt can see anything past his own drunkenness. That's fair. Okay. And I'm I'm almost positive Gimli and Elodie could probably tell that Cindy's drunk, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're going to blissfully ignore I, the underage I'll... drinking. Maybe she'll learn her lesson from this. Ah, uh, just wait for the hangover. They always learn. Cindy was yeah. responsible and only had one drink. I had my first yeah. drink when I was twelve. <laughs> it was rough. What Sorry. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a mining town. Yeah, no, it's not unreasonable for yeah, country the... bumpkins to drink at a young age, but <laughs> it's funny. The the drinking age in Kalos is is younger, but not that young. Uh, I'm fifteen. I'm, I'm practically that. an adult. <laughs> yes. Sure. <laughs> so you say. Uh, where's what's next for the Paco? Sleep. 
sleep. Do you wish to hostel or do you wish to go to like a resorty hotel or do you want to go to like a motel? I mean, hostel baby. Yeah. Hostel baby. Yeah. Hostel baby. Hostel has been our vibe. Okay. There's no people out really, uh, but there are. Well, Elodie, roll me a perception check. Elodie. Uh, I believe that is an 18. Cool. The gang notices that there's a whole bunch of Corsola and a bunch of them are sleeping now, but a lot of them are just kind of waddling around. There's truly like you have to navigate around them. Um, Elodie hears the sound of striking or hammering coming from the east. Uh, She doesn't necessarily have to do anything about it, but she observes the sound of what sounds like carpentry. Um, The path to the Pokemon Center hostel is to the south, if that is where the gang tends to go. You said the sound was coming from the south? The too? east. The sound is coming from the, the east. east. Is that the direction of the house we demolished? That is to the north. Mm. Mm. The okay. east is like the ocean, more or less. Okay. I'm kind of curious what the noise is, so I will tell the gang that I am hearing a mysterious carpentry noise and that I think I would like to check it out if they would like to join me. Hear the mysterious carpenter noise. Are we sure we want to do that with two drunks? We could drop them off. Yeah, let's drop them off first. You're right. <laughs> let's take them back and then we could go check it out. Ouch. Okay. is completely limp by this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to just drag him along to a bad scenario. If, uh... Cindy is using all of her strength to like drag him along and pretend she is helping. Okay. Yeah, she is certainly not. Make a Cindy, make a dex check. <laughs> that is a 10. She trips on a Corsola. Owie! Ow, ow, ow! Um, they're sharp and pointy. Jeez. Uh, Again. Roll a d6. <laughs> Again with the Corsola damage. It's a one. Cindy takes one point of Corsola damage as she gets poked in the back. Ow! Ow, ow, owie! Yeah. Owie, my backy! <laughs> <laughs> true um yeah uh we don't have to particularly have much flavor unless you want to mess around the pokemon center you're able to get beds you're able to get some room for all of you and you can drop off schmidt and cindy if you wish yep okay one of the classic lady gimli adventures the parents of the group are you going to go investigate the sound yes okay um you move to the east you're able to track it pretty clearly um it is coming from the shipyard uh do you get on the dock and check it out yes um do i have a role here yeah why not uh well, gimli give me a, a perception i suppose i like having people roll 14 14 great the two of you get to the shipyard and there's there's some there's some boats that are parked around on off of this dock the sound is coming from none other than these nuts your rental ship oh. um there is a man Inside of the ship, who is obscured, you cannot see him. There's a masculine figure, um, mm-hmm. and there is a box of carpentry tools, and he is hammering away inside the ship. Oh, yeah, hello? The hammering stops, and the man stands up and turns around, and he says, Can I help you? As he does not recognize who you are. Uh, th- this is actually uh, our ship. Um, who, are y- who are you? He He's going to make a check. Elder, you're with Gimli, right? Yes. Okay. He looks and he recognizes, and he says, Sarah, "Oh, Elodie, uh, hey, sorry, it's Brandon." Ah, Brandon. Uh, Brandon. I guess I should have said something, but I, I just felt like it was the right thing to do. I've, I've been, I've been working on the ship. I've, I've been fixing it up for you. That's, that's very nice of you. You didn't have to do that. Uh, he runs his hand through his hair and he says, "I was hoping you wouldn't find out. I was hoping you'd just get here in the morning and you'd see that it was all, all good." But I got a little bit more work to do. Uh, I, you could just leave and pretend like you never saw me, and we could call it good. But, but the, I mean, this this was very nice of you. I don't. He says, "Ah, don't worry about it. It's just something I I wanted to do. I got to keep busy with my hands, you know." Um, Brandon looks very tired. Mm. Well, well, I mean, you're trying to finish. Do you do you want some help? <laughs> uh, roll persuasion. Uh, crap. <laughs> uh, yeah. Brandon thinks about it, and he sees how strong and tough you are, and he says, "Yeah, you know what? If you want to help me wrap this up, maybe we can all turn in a little bit earlier. Make it a good night." Yeah, uh, you've seen like you worked hard enough. I can help you out. Yeah, Elodie, do you want to help as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll help. Yeah. Okay. Um, you do that. We can flavor past time that this will take you until five thirty a.m. 
to finish. Do you want to flavor any interactions or questions or discussions or anything as you repair these nuts? <laughs> I find every opportunity to leave them uh, like kind of alone <laughs> as much as possible. Sure, sure, sure. Brandon is kind of quiet, kind of shy. He was hoping that no one would know he was doing this. Um, and he's also extremely tired. Uh, Elodie, you I, don't have to. It seems like you have something to say. Yeah, Sorry. I was just gonna gonna say. Uh, I wanted to say uh, I'm sorry again uh, for everything. I uh, I hope you didn't get into any trouble or anything. Roll charisma. Please be good. Oh my god. Is it not? Uh, seven. Oh Seven's god. all right. Seven's all right. Uh, Brandon kind of just grunts and he says, don't mention it. Uh, really don't mention it. I'm, I'm not in trouble. It, it's fine. He laughs and he says, Sarah didn't want me to escort her anyways. So I ended up just needing something to do with my night. So I came here. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, he's got to make her move. Come on. Dude, I don't know, man. I don't know what to say. What do you say in a moment like this when you're uh, fixing a boat together with a police officer? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, don't typical say moment. the word, it's, it's no, a not a single moment, word. You should have a playbook for this one. Kiss the girl. <laughs> you're right. I should I should la, 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 this line up. My, oh my. <laughs> if Cindy were there, she would be singing, <laughs> but she is not. <laughs> la, 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 my, oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Don't forget, uh, valid RPs are also making statements. Elodie does X as well, if you want. You don't have to, but just throw it out true. there. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would like to, to converse with him. Um, Anything in particular or just general chatting? Is this flirting? Is this discussing? Is this, what kind of discussion is this? I just don't know if we're like back to, can I, can I get a read on him again? Insight, like, baby. Yeah. Insight, insight. I don't yeah. know if we're like back to flirting. Jesus Christ. Uh, two. Two? Oh, no. How do I want to flavor this? Give me a second. Gosh, I guess the simplest thing would just for, be for Elodie to just have no idea. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Like, she she does not know. Blind. Yeah. yeah. That means you yeah. just gotta shoot your shot. No insight, no intuition, just feelings. I mean, she did just have a drink, so she has something to blame it on. If that's it doesn't true. Work out. Ooh, yeah, I'm, like, I'm probably like a little... Girl. A little, a little tipsy, a little buzz, a little confident. A little, a little um, something. A little something. Oh, gosh. Because, like, I can't imagine. I have to imagine, like, we're probably leaving soon. But, like, I don't know. I guess ask him, like, if, you know. Hey, yo, girl, can I get your number? Hey, yo, girl, can I get your number? I don't know. Like, more or less, like, if, if we're around long enough. If he <laughs> would want to, you know. Try again. Try again, yeah. Like go uh, go somewhere together. How I don't know how to phrase this, man. I have no riz. Not true. You're the only one with riz. Elodie's yeah, riz. You are, the, you you are, are the riz actually character. the riz. No, listen, Elodie's riz grace is not. <laughs> That's fine. We can just say the that Elodie, we can argue we can state that um Elodie makes a compelling up. claim that she would want yeah. to Visit Brandon again in a more than familiar kind of proximity, right? Yeah. Something like that. Just stated really nicely. Please roll me a charisma check with advantage. Okay. okay we got advantage this time. That has to mean good news, right? Let's go. I'm, this is the third two that I've rolled with this dice. We're, we're rolling with a new one because literally third in a row. Okay. All right. This is better. This is charisma. This is 18. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, Brandon hears the request and he says, if you're around, I think I'd like that. That's good to hear. I look forward to it. And thank you again for, you know, helping with the boat. I think I did. I, I meant what I said. I think that's really nice of you to do. And you, you didn't have to do that. Brandon says, once again, don't mention it. Not not a problem. Ellie, roll a D6. Okay. Two. Two. Not only working through 5.30 a.m., have you repaired these nuts basically completely, basically good as new. There's some cracks in the wood that were varnished over that won't quite be the same, but it's it's nice looking. Um, not only have you also 
potentially repaired a relationship with Brandon, which is pretty cool, or like, you know, perhaps securing a date in the future. Um, you have also uh, created a new improvement for the ship. And cutely, you and Brandon worked together on the port and starboard hull, the wood that um, comes up on the top that was formerly just white, uh, now has a decal that says these nuts and there are next to the Z or is it an S? No, it's next to the S on these nuts. There are two um, C dots that are standing next to each other. Um, very friendly, almost as if they are smooching. Aww. Kira, Aww. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious like about it. makes a point to say these nuts. Like, <laughs> you repaired these nuts. Like, he always puts a little pause there. Yeah, just like... Uh, <laughs> Listen, someone's got to say it. I just throw these nuts. There you go. Anything else for you guys this evening before you go turn in? I think that uh, that was pretty good. Okay. Yeah. No. No need for particularly more distinct dialogue or RP if you don't want it. But yeah, Brandon is down to hang out with Elodie in the future. Do you go slumber? I think it's slumber time. It's slumber time after a night of. Enjoying the nightlife in Dufer Town, the Quacko Paco returns to the hostel and rests up where tomorrow they intend to meet up with Wally and determine what exactly is going on with their legal situation and perhaps making strides towards finding Gimli's lost son. Hello and thank you for listening to Dunsparce and Drampa, the 71st episode. Can you believe that we've made it this far? Be sure to check out our link tree if you haven't already. That's at L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Dunsparce. There you can find links to our merch store, our social medias like our Discord and our Twitter, and the Patreon where you can help make this podcast possible. If you join the Patreon by the 5th, you'll be able to see exclusively the artwork that Grace made for Elodie and Cindy in their new outfits from this session. For just the price of a cup of coffee a month, you can help make the podcast possible. To all of our current patrons, we are so grateful for you. We literally could not be doing this without you. Thank you so much. We're looking forward to joining you for episode 72 on October 17th. See you then. Uh, proficient in athletics and intimidation. Uh, minus two intelligence. Same. Yeah. yeah. Hey. <laughs> me in real life. Yeah, me IRL, dude. Six mad revives. Grr. So mad. So mad revive. Howdy, partners. Welcome to Braymart. Oh, okay. Damn. Is I was going to guess Claymart. Is he a can? <laughs> Is he a can? I just can. <laughs> That's for all the Barbie like movie watchers. All, all those Barbie movie viewers. The tempting tepig. It's perfect. Dick. Run by dick. <laughs> Do they sell khakis there? Like work pants? Nobody oh, gets that. Like dickies. dickies. Yeah. Now you get it. Kira, I will pay you extra for a compilation of every time Richie said these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good patreon content kira here first editor note ever hi here to respond to the d's nuts propositions <laughs> um schmidt squids jacob yes how much